Hi everyone. In this lesson we are looking at the motion of satellites and to simplify our analysis we are assuming that the satellite is in circular motion about the Earth. So the picture is the following. So here is the Earth and here is your satellite and it is going about in a perfect circle and it's a distance r from the center. So, the centripetal force that is keeping it in this circle is due to the force of gravity. So, essentially what we're saying is that that centripetal force is the gravitational force. We know now a general expression for the force of gravity. We also know from way back when what a general expression is for centripetal force. So we're setting these two equal because the force of gravity is what is producing the centripetal force. We're plugging in the equations for each of those, what they're equal to. Notice the mass values cancel, as does one factor of r. So here is the speed of a satellite in a circular orbit. It's the square root of the gravitational constant times the mass of the Earth divided by the distance from the center of the Earth to the satellite. So that is the speed in, circular, in a circular orbit. Let us now look at the period, the time it takes for that satellite to complete one orbit. Recall that um, speed is distance divided by time, or time is distance divided by speed. So period is a time, and so we want to know what is the distance traveled when you make one rotation, one orbit, that's 2 pi times the radius, of course that's the circumference of a circle, divided by that speed that we just found. And that speed we just found was here. So you plug that in, And let's clean it up a little bit. We have r times the square root of r. That's just r to the 3 halves. Still have the 2 pi, and it's divided by the square root of g times me. So there is the period of a satellite in a circular orbit. And finally, let's look at the energy in a circular orbit. Total energy is kinetic energy plus potential energy. So your kinetic energy is, as always, one-half mv squared, but we're plugging in that value for v that we previously found. And then this is the potential energy of gravity that we looked at in the previous lesson. Notice that I'm squaring away this square root, and so I can easily combine these into one term. The total energy in a circular orbit is actually negative. What does this actually mean? What this means is that you need to put in a positive amount of that energy in order to escape Earth's gravitational pull. So for instance, if you have negative 20 times 10 to the 10 joules, that means you need 20 times 10 to the 10 joules to escape Earth's gravity. Let's do an example. So, what is the speed, period, and energy of a 1,000 kilogram satellite orbiting 300 kilometers above Earth? These are pretty simple problems because we have a limited amount of equations to work with. To find speed, I use the speed equation, and I'm already plugging in the values. This is the gravitational constant, this is the mass of the Earth, and this is the distance from the center. This is probably the only place that you could make a mistake. Remember, it's not just 300 kilometers you need to worry about. It is 300 kilometers plus the radius of the Earth. And then, of course, we need to make sure we're in standard units for length, which is the meter. To three sig figs, your speed is 7.73 .73 times 10 to the third meters per second. What is the period? 
Well, the period is going to be 2 pi times the distance from the center of the Earth. So that's just adding these two up divided by the speed that we just found. This is trivial, right? The period we saw was just 2 pi times the distance divided by the speed. And here is the time, 5.42 times 10 to the third seconds. And finally, what is the total energy? Well, I just plugged in the values into the energy expression. And to three sig figs, it is negative 2.98 times 10 to the 10 joules. What that tells you then, you need 2.98 times 10 to the 10 joules that you need to put into the system so that the satellite can escape Earth's orbit. That's all I have for this lesson. The next video will be our fourth review.